Imagine standing at the crease, facing a towering fast bowler nearly 7 feet tall, holding a red cricket ball that could cause havoc on impact. You're unsure if he's targeting your head, chest or toes. And as he charges in, there's no time for hesitation. In the late 1970s and early 80s, this was the terrifying reality for batsman facing Joel Garner. His sheer height combined with lethal bowling skills made him a nightmare on the pitch. Joel Garner's mere presence on the cricket field was enough to send shivers down the spine of his opponents. But it was his skill, precision and sheer dominance on the field that truly defined him as one of the greatest fast bowlers of all time. 6 feet and 8 inches was the height and the pace behind his deliveries was like an express train. Yes, we have seen some fearsome fast bowlers over the years, but for sheer brutality, well, nobody even comes close to Garner. Born on December 16, 1952 in Barbados, Garner's journey to cricketing greatness began in his early years. To Garner's advantage, he had legendary fast bowlers Wes Hall and Charlie Griffith as coaches. Griffith was the one who taught Garner how to bowl a yorker that swung in the air and how to use a bouncer effectively. Blessed with exceptional height and a natural talent for bowling, he quickly rose through the ranks of West Indies cricket, making his international debut in 1977 against Pakistan. On a batting pitch, Garner captured 4 for 130 and 2 for 60. By the end of the series, the Big Bird had 25 wickets to his name. His debut performance showcased glimpses of his future dominance, laying the foundation for a legacy that would see him become one of the most feared bowlers of his era. His debut in the shorter format was equally impressive. His figures read 9 overs with 3 maidens giving away 27 runs and 3 wickets. Throughout his career, Garner's ability to consistently deliver lethal spells of fast bowling would make him a linchpin of the West Indies legendary pace battery, leaving an indelible mark on the sport. Garner was quite often unplayable and almost always unhittable. Garner would just glide to the wicket in a rhythmic, relaxed manner before releasing the red cherry in one fluid motion. It all seemed so effortless, like a bird in flight. His sheer height meant that even a good length delivery would rear up uncomfortably towards the batsman's ribcage. And when he pitched it short, it was like facing a missile coming at you. His accuracy and control were impeccable making him a fearsome prospect for any batsman. Garner's most famous attribute was his devastating yorker, delivered with precision and venom. Batsmen around the world trembled at the thought of facing his toe-crushing deliveries. His partnership with the likes of Michael Holding, Malcolm Marshall and Andy Roberts formed the backbone of the fearsome West Indies space attack, often leaving oppositions battered and bruised. Former England captain Mike Burley once stated, The trouble is that, Garner's hand delivers over the top of the side screen, which makes him impossible to sight early. When you have one ball getting up chest height and another coming at your toenails, it's jolly difficult to survive, especially when you're looking for quick runs as we were. The year was 1979 and the Cricket World Cup was the battleground. Garner, donning the maroon of the West Indies, wreaked havoc upon his opponents with his trademark Yorkers and Bouncers. West Indies had made 286 in 60 overs at the time and England needed an extraordinary batting performance to win. But would Joel Garner let the Englishman take away the World Cup? Not at all. He took 5 wickets for just 38 runs in 11 overs, meaning he gave away less than 4 runs per over and 4 of his victims being done by those trademark Yorkers. That also included an inspired 11 ball spell amounting to 5 wickets for 4 runs including the wickets of Graham Gooch and David Gower. England went from 129 for 0 to 194 all out. Cliff Lloyd on this spell said, Garner broke the back. It was just wonderful. His dominant bowling performance led West Indies to a huge win by 92 runs, in turn lifting their second consecutive World Cup. The amazing thing about the Big Bird is that for the most part, he was a stock bowler due to the presence of Andy Roberts and Michael Holding, meaning he started to get the new ball regularly only from 1984, when he was already 31. Yet, he ended up with 259 wickets in just 58 tests at a meagre average of 20.97, which makes him statistically one of the most effective cricketers of all time. However, even more mind-boggling are the statistics Garner totted up in ODIs. 
His 98 matches in the shorter version of the game got him 146 wickets at 18.84, the best bowling average for anyone with more than 35 wickets in the format. The rate of leaking runs was restricted to a near ridiculous 3.09 per over, the best among all those who have bowled at least 1000 balls. He is also the all-time highest ranked ODI bowler with 940 points. Garner was a force till the end, when he called it a day at the age of 35 after the New Zealand Tour of 1987, he had captured 12 wickets at 17 in the series, topping the averages yet again. While Joel Garner may not have always been in the forefront during his playing days, sharing the stage with other formidable West Indian bowlers, I truly believe the West Indian bowling attack would have lagged the formidable edge that made it so dominant. And along with the bowling attack that made the West Indies so strong was the batting. And one of the players responsible for this is none other than Sir Vivian Richards. Click on the video being displayed on your screen to explore the electrifying brilliance of the Master Blaster and his enduring impact on the game of cricket. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And until next time, keep watching this beautiful game. See you soon.